Welcome to Excel Radio with Dr. Nick Zarowski, where we talk with world-class entrepreneurs, executives, and health experts who have unlocked the secrets to Excel Health and performance. This is your health and high performance expert, Dr. Nick Zarowski. In this episode, we have a very special guest by the name of Orletha. Orletha is an entrepreneur who's been featured in many popular publications, such as First for Women magazine, The Los Angeles Times, and Paleo Miracle. She has also written several different cookbooks. Orletha has a very interesting journey towards health in which she shares in this episode. She also shares a lot about her company, 20 Dishes. Her company, 20 Dishes, teaches people how to cook a week's worth of good, healthy, nutritious meals in just a few short hours. I'm excited for this information and excited to be able to share it with you. Welcome to the show, Arletha. Thanks so much for having me. Okay, so could you tell us your story as an entrepreneur? You have a company called 20 Dishes. You know, How did you come up with this? And just give us a little bit of a background of who you are and what you're doing. Awesome. So like most people, my entrepreneur story starts with a personal situation and I was working full time. Um, I was in school for my master's at that point and I had kids. Well, I still have kids. Uh, I have a husband. And so I was trying to take care of Mm -hmm. everything. And as most entrepreneurs understand as well, you don't take care of yourself. And it was because I had so much going on. I mean, I had like a thousand things going on and I was like, I have to eat better. I have to start somewhere. I have to eat better, but I just don't have time. And so what I did was I I learned, I started talking to some chefs and I'm like, I got to get in my kitchen, get out faster. And so I learned a bunch of trips and techniques and all these hacks to get in and out of my kitchen faster. And I have friends who are like, oh my gosh, how do you do that in a week? Like you literally, or in an hour, you prep your whole week in about an hour and you have like healthy meals on hand. And I'm like, well, yeah, everybody can do, I'm I'm thinking everybody can do this. And then all of a sudden it hit me and it's like, this can totally be a great business model. And so I launched 20 dishes with um, a few of my business part two bi- two business partners who are also super busy <laughs> entrepreneurs yeah. and uh, we put some really great healthy recipes up and we actually teach people how to get in and out of the kitchen in an hour and prep your week week of meals um, because if you don't have if you're not prepared like seriously you're just gonna fail and so that's what um, our business is and it is amazing and it's been growing leaps and bounds <laughs> over the last few months really excited that's interesting so is this would this be considered batch cooking where you're making large quantities of food or is it just you're actually prepping like smaller quantities but you're just just getting it available and ready to go right it's like meal prep meets batch cooking so you can prep a large quantity if you want to when i first started i was doing a month at a time Oh, wow. And so, yeah, but I figured that would be overwhelming for people. So I broke it down to a week at a time and people, um, our members have access to three weeks at a time if they want, uh, but it's totally up to them. They get the recipes and we give them the step-by-step instructions and we give them the shopping list. And then we also do it live once a quarter with them just in case they have questions. So we have one coming up at the end of this month that we'll be doing live with live Q&A. So that, that'll be fun. Yeah, it sounds like it. So, you know, you have kids, you have a family, and you're running a business. So, you know, like how much time do you think that this saves you throughout your week to go in and prep your meals? Well, on average, it takes most people about an hour in the kitchen every day to cook their dinner. And so for me, every night it takes me between 15 and 20 minutes. And so it saves me at least three to four hours just in the kitchen every night. And so, and sometimes even more, because all I have to do is pull it out of the freezer and it's already done. You know, I just throw in a crock pot. <laughs> so That's interesting. It's really, um, really saving me hours and hours of not only um, prep time, but sometimes in the middle of the week, if I'm not prepped, I'll forget something and I got to go to the store and that means I'm going to spend more money and more time in the store. And then I got right. my kids, I'm dragging them and it's just a nightmare. So it just helps me to, to definitely save time in the kitchen, but also out of the kitchen. And let's not even think about the amount of stress that it saves. Right. Well, I mean, I know that this is like super important to any, you know, 
basically anybody who's busy. I mean, we could say entrepreneurs, but anybody who's busy, this could be massive value, right? Right. It's because, you know, a lot of times we don't really realize how much preparation is important in maintaining a healthy lifestyle. You know, you think, oh, yeah, I'm just going to I'm going to eat clean. Well, you're not going to go to McDonald's and eat clean. You sure aren't going to go to Burger King and eat clean. You just can't. And so and it gets really expensive if you did find a restaurant that is completely clean and you want to eat out. You don't want to eat out every night. Right. Um, so you, you definitely want to know what's in your food and where it's coming from. And that's what we definitely push is clean food, what's in it, clean ingredients, and eating well. And it, it's, it's not even that. It's you want to eat good food. <laughs> My kids refuse to eat junk, like just gross food. So all of our recipes are tested on my kids. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. A lot of people think that like healthy food equals gross food, right? And like, that's, that's what I tell people all the time is like, look, I don't eat gross food and, and nor would I ever. So you better believe that I eat healthy, but you better believe it tastes really good too. Right, right. I mean, nobody wants to say, wants to feel like they have to give up eating good food. You know, nobody wants that. Nobody's like, hey, you know, I'm on this new gross food diet. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> right. Would you say that probably one of the really important keys in, in something that's just absolutely essential when it comes to eating healthy is to spend the time in preparation? Definitely. So, I mean, I, I'll give you a little bit more of my story. And uh, so I was 260 pounds and I'm every bit of five one, And so that is not very healthy. So after what happened was I had blood work done and was told that I was like, I think the risk was four times the risk of having a stroke. And I was like 27, 28, very young. Wow. Two, right. Two little kids. And so I wasn't into the real food movement. I didn't know anything about being healthy. All I knew was Weight Watchers. And I had been there seven times, six times. And, um, and it just wasn't successful. I didn't know what to do. Um, and so I ended up having gastric bypass and I lost weight, but I didn't lose the weight that I needed and I didn't cure myself from the health, from my health ailments like eczema and all these other things that I had going on. And so what I found was the paleo diet, the way to eat, the way to eat uh, paleo lifestyle. And, but I found that I have, it was just taking up too much time because I couldn't be prepared. You know, I was just, I was coming home and not sure what was for dinner. And you really don't want that story. I mean, that, that's you know, playing through your head, what's for dinner, what's for dinner with your kids and, and family. So that's, I knew that I had to be prepared to be successful. And what that ended up doing is I ended up losing the weight that I needed to. And I resolved my eczema and my tendonitis. And so I knew that it was preparation is the only way that I could eat healthy. And that's the only way that I was going to maintain the lifestyle. And so I've been, I've kept, I mean, I've lost the weight seven years ago, six years ago and kept it off. And, and all of the other health ailments that are resolved have been resolved since that time. I haven't had an asthma attack in, in seven years, which is amazing considering I used to have my rescue inhaler in my purse because I would wow. have them every few days. That's incredible. <laughs> so I knew that I had to find a way to maintain it. I knew I had to find a way to be prepared because if I wasn't, I wasn't going to maintain my health and I couldn't let that happen. Right. Well, yeah. I mean, and so for first of all, that's a really inspirational story because I know that there's plenty of people out there who are struggling with the exact same thing you struggled with at one point, and you know that as well. And you know, today, I mean, I would have never guessed um, you weighed what was it two? What did you say it was? <laughs> two sixty. <laughs> two sixty. Yeah. I mean, you look incredible today. So I would have Thanks. never guessed that that was um, you know the case. So. You know, and that's something that's really important when it comes to talking about this whole topic of, you know, the way that you uh, run 20 dishes is that it is healthy food. You're not like throwing together like macaroni and cheese in bulk, right? I mean, you no. you, you have a, yeah, I mean, you <laughs> have a no very way. like different philosophy. Right. Our, our, I just finished the um, meal plans for next week and put them up. And like, for instance, they're having uh, grilled there's a really beautiful grilled peach and grilled it's grilled peaches and avocados and there's a peach vinaigrette that goes over it and that's being served alongside of a balsamic um, pork tenderloin medallion and that is absolutely delicious. That sounds delicious. And then there's a strawberry salad that we just put up and I'm like, oh, that sounds so good. So I'm having strawberry salad today because <laughs> it's summertime and I want yeah. a big strawberry salad. So I'm going to have that myself. <laughs> 
<laughs> awesome. So, you know, so really what is your philosophy on eating then? Is it paleo or paleo-ish or is it close to that or is it something totally different then? It's more of a paleo template where you, okay. what I had, I mean, a lot of times people get into the, have a lot of health issues and they just want to find a quick fix. Like whatever is the magic bullet done. Well, there is no magic bullet. You're, you're going to have to learn to listen to your body and do what's best for your body. So I started out completely fully paleo, just full on OCD paleo is what I called it. Because I, I found if I find a rule, I'm going to follow it. It's just the way that I would work. And so I found that it was too low carb for me because I wasn't having any white potatoes. I wasn't really having sweet potato. I just, it was meat and gr green leafy vegetables and that's mm -hmm. it. And then um, my thyroid was getting um, very sluggish, and I could I, after I had the blood work done, found out that it was my thyroid, and that the way to make that feel better would be to eat more carbs and carbs in the form of like rice mm -hmm. and white potatoes. And so I was like, at first I was like, oh my gosh, I can't eat yeah. rice; it's not paleo. And then I'm like, wait a minute, being healthy—that's what I need. And so that's why I did this in the first place, and that's the journey that I'm on. And so I added back rice. And I felt a thousand times better. So I guess I would say I eat real food. <laughs> yeah. yeah, excellent. And, and, and yeah, awesome philosophy, right? It's not like crazy strict, but it's just, you know, it's it's doable. And, you know, so you're also, you're also doing this for your family, right? It's not just for you or you're doing it for the whole family, correct? Right. Both of, all, both of my kids are, uh, my, well, my, my son is nine and my daughter is seven. And my biggest kid is my husband, and he <laughs> was the hardest one to convince. Um, since my children are so, they were so young when we, I started eating this way, my daughter's been eating this way since she was basically one or two. Okay. So she doesn't know any different. Um, my son does know different, and it's so funny because so many people say, well, what do you do when they go to a birthday party? And I'm like, I let them make choices because I don't want them to feel that food is their enemy. And I want them to understand that when they don't give their body the right fuel that it needs, that their body is going to respond and they need I, to know what that means. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, exactly. I mean, I know that my daughter, she'll uh, she'll always ask now because she's she's kind of at the point where she knows that she gets sick if she eats junk food. And um, and so she'll ask if it's OK to eat if she's not sure of it. The other funny thing is, it's like sometimes her like leg will hurt or something and she'll be like does my leg hurt because i ate too much sugar daddy <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so she'll like relate like having like a sore joint or something because she ate bad it's just kind of funny yeah. <laughs> yeah i mean i let them i let them make their choices and my son i remember very clearly when he decided he was never going to eat ca birthday cake frosting anymore because like it he he was like I'm gonna eat this cake and I'm thinking okay I know it's gonna make his stomach hurt he hasn't had gluten in about two years at this yeah. point mm -hmm. and he that we don't eat sugar like that and so he's he's gonna be sick and I'm thinking oh my gosh he's gonna be sick and the mom and me is like wanting to stop him and I'm thinking yeah. I have to let him make his choices and he literally ate the cake and then he's playing around and he comes to me and he's like I feel so bad mom my stomach hurts and he's like bawling. And I'm like, well, I, I tried to tell you, you have to make good choices. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, inside hurting, but he never touched it again. Like that was it for him. So no amount of nagging and being the food police, no amount of that would have stopped him or taught him that lesson as his body taught him, you know, right. his body responded and that's, he changed from there. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And that's, yeah, it's, it's let them learn on their own. That's great. So, you know, <clears throat> one of the things that I'm interested in is that, you know, there's a million different kitchen gadgets out there that are that people have and buy. So what are the some of the essential kitchen gadgets that are really necessary for having a 20 dish kitchen? So for me and, and my husband calls me the gadget queen because I absolutely love kitchen gadgets. If okay. I see one, I'm going to buy it. Even <laughs> but <laughs> I love my crock pot. I have three crock pots actually, because I can have one going and that one can go for tonight. I can have another meal going for tomorrow and it can totally be in the refrigerator and ready for, you know, not having to do anything but reheat it. And in the summer, they're great because I don't have to heat up my house. You know, yeah. a lot of people use crock pots in the winter and they think of it as a fall or a winter thing, but I'm, I love them in the summer 
because my house doesn't get hot. So my crock pot is my best friend. And then I also love my julienne peeler because I can make zucchini noodles really quickly with them and all kinds of vegetable noodles, carrot noodles, sweet potato noodles, all kinds of noodles with them. And my kids think they're, they're super fun. So <laughs> my julienne peeler and my crock pot are my best friends. Okay. I'd have to say for me, it's probably the, it's probably the blender, the Vitamix blender. Oh yeah. Yeah, totally. If, 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 you know, the thing too is like a lot of people get overwhelmed with, um, things like Vitamix because they're like, they're so expensive, but they are so worth it. If you, yeah. you know, if you really invest in a good blender like that, then you don't have to buy another one, you know, and it does so much more. Um, my instant pot is really nice too. <laughs> But uh, I love my blend, my basic blender too. I have like a thirty-five dollar blender. Mm -hmm. It's it's really good too for chopping onions. You can chop onions in it really quickly. You can rice cauliflower in it really quickly. And I have a, a bunch of video hacks on um, YouTube because I think the faster you can get in and out of your kitchen, the more likely you are to go in there and make a healthy meal. If you don't feel like you're a slave to your kitchen, <laughs> so I try to help people get out faster. Yeah, that's yeah, that's pretty incredible. What's your YouTube channel called? So there's a there's twenty dishes. So we twenty dishes has a YouTube channel mm -hmm. um, as well. So I put most of the hacks on twenty dishes. Okay, yeah, because I, <clears throat> I I'm gonna get to those in a minute, but I and they sounded really interesting when we talked about it the other day. All right. So what does this look like then? All right. So you're prepping meals for the full week. Can you kind of go through what that would look like as, um, you know, prepping a breakfast, prepping a lunch and prepping dinner? And, and even if you, I don't know if you actually prep all those meals. But. No. So what I do is we prep dinners okay. um, because that's the, di that's the meal that most people struggle with. You know, breakfast is usually eggs for most people, something pretty simple. And lunch is usually leftovers or something that you grab. Okay. But dinner is where most people struggled. And so that's where we started the, the focus. Um, but what it looks like is you get, there's a list, a step-by-step -step list that I give every week. And if you, all you have to do is follow the steps. So one step might be, okay, you're going to chop seven onions because we're going to do, you know, two onions in this recipe, two onions in that recipe and three onions in this one. So something like that. So you'll chop your onions and you'll prep your vegetables for the week if you have salads or green beans, and then you'll do your meats, you'll make your marinades, you'll do um, any type of rubs or seasonings, and then some meals are prepared completely. So like for instance, let's say we're having meat meatloaf, you would completely prepare the meatloaf, bake it, pull it out of the oven, let it cool, and toss it in the freezer. This is because you want to let, the, that can happen while you're cutting onions and doing everything else that can cook. Mm -hmm. But meatloaf always tastes better when it's old. <laughs> you know, it, it tastes better the next day. And, and that's one of those meals that always that tastes better, like chili tastes better the next day. And so if you freeze it and you let it come to room temperature or you let it thaw in the refrigerator, those flavors get to marry and it makes for a much richer tasting meatloaf when you take it out. And so it's things like that where I've done some, you know, digging with different chefs and different people who I know are amazing cooks and just said, Hey, what's your secret to that? And how do you do this? And how does that taste better? It's because, Oh, it's because I freeze it and then I pull it out. Oh, so Interesting. I, <laughs> I let, I put all those uh, tips and tricks in 20 dishes to make sure that you have that people have delicious food. I don't want them to eat bad food. I want them to eat it and enjoy it and love every second of it. You know? <laughs> Right. So is one of the one of the tricks here, like making sure that the ingredients align. So for instance, you were talking about cutting up onions and I can imagine if you're shopping and and, uh, and you're going to prep all the dishes in one day, it'd be easiest if ingredients somewhat align throughout the dishes. Is that important? Yes, definitely. So you don't want to have, you know, a recipe where or you what I found was my biggest issue when I first started was I was trying to do one recipe at a time. Okay. And so that takes forever. And so what I found is I group the different steps. So I read all of the recipes. I group all of the steps that are close or similar or use the same tools and I do them all at once. And then, so for instance, if I have, you know, eight cups of onions, I know how much one onion is in the recipe. So if a recipe calls for three onions, I know that how much of that neat, the, that bowl of onions needs to go in that recipe. You know, so that way I can just, it's like a assembly line. Yeah. So once you have everything out, you can just put it all together. You know, so I teach <clears throat> the people to put out a mise en place, for instance, when they're 
when they're prepping. So get all of your spices out, all of everything that you're going to need and put it on the counter. Because that way, if you're missing something, you can automatically go, okay, I need this, I need that, I don't need this. And when you're prepping, you don't have to rifle through the cabinets looking for something. <laughs> you know? Yeah. You're trying to find it. It's, it's right there. Just grab it, put it in there, put it back. Done. Super easy. Okay. So a lot of the things that you're doing, are you actually making them and then freezing them? Or is it just certain things are better off frozen and certain things aren't? So some things are better off frozen. Some things you can't freeze. And so some things are, most things are refrigerated. So okay. um, you'll chop all of your carrots and shred all of your cabbage and that'll be refrigerated until the meal day. And then that way when you come home from work, all you have to do is pull out your cabbage and your onions, toss it in the pan, let it go. You're done. Okay. Instead of having to come home and chop, 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 you know, you don't want to do that. Right. Some of them are crock pot meals. So you put them in the freezer and you pull it out and you let it thaw. And the thawing, what that does in the refrigerator is it lets the meat marinate while it's thawing. And then you throw it in the crock pot and it cooks and the meat is much more flavorful that way. Okay. So that's, that's just another, like I said, tip and trick that I've found over the years. <laughs> Makes my food even better. Yeah, that's interesting. Very interesting. So it's it's not necessarily that every every meal will be prepped in full, however, or in, in actually like all put together, but at least the ingredients are ready to just be dumped in a pan or just ready to go. Right. So uh, some some things like for instance fish. Fish does not prep ahead well. You just you don't want to do that. It's just not going to be tasty. Right. Um but what you can do is prep everything that's going to go in that dish with okay. the fish. So that's exactly what you do, what I have them do. And so this probably cuts down on dishes as well, big time. Definitely. Right. Because right, you only make one big mess and then you clean it out. <laughs> right. So what are like, let's, let's say, what are maybe two of your favorite meals to prep throughout the week that just, you know, they come out great and something everybody really enjoys? So I absolutely love Kahlua, my Kahlua pork because it's three ingredients. It goes in the crock pot. I don't have to think about it. And then everything that comes out of that crock pot can be repurposed. So it's Kahlua pork, but then I repurpose it with barbecue sauce and stuff it in a, um, a baked sweet potato. And then I also take that soft, salty meat and put that on coleslaw and the crunch of the coleslaw with that salty, smoky goodness is just delicious. <laughs> so that's one of my favorite. Like, the Kahlua pork is one of my absolute favorite wow. recipes. Yeah. yeah. And it's easy. It's super easy. You just, you know, it's three ingredients in the crock pot and you're done. And then I also love bacon wrapped chicken because that is another one. I'm a, I'm a big fan of repurposing food as well. So yeah, sounds if like you, it. it's because, I mean, it cuts down on your grocery bill. Um, and my husband near his job, there is no place to eat. So I have to make sure that he has lunch. And so I repurpose dinner and he doesn't like basic leftovers. So like for instance, bacon wrapped chicken. If we have bacon wrapped chicken for dinner, then what I'll do is I'll take the leftovers and I'll chop it up and I'll put it over a beautiful salad with barbecue sauce, red onions, and cilantro. And now he has a barbecue bacon wrapped chicken or bar barbecue chicken salad. And you know, it's really, really delicious. Um, and then that one freezes really well too in individual servings because it's just bacon wrapped thighs, you know, and you can pull them out one at a time and chop them up and put them on a salad or I also love it on um, my my barbecue chicken pizza is really good with that. Yeah, and so yeah, and so I love to, I love bacon wrapped chicken and Kahlua pork. Those are my two faves. My kids love those too. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that sounds really good. So you're making me hungry here. Just <laughs> I know. I'm like, ooh, it's all, it's almost time for lunch. <laughs> yeah, we might have to like cut this early. You're in California. It's almost time for dinner here. So. <laughs> Um, but you know, you made an interesting point there. So does cooking like this really cut down on your grocery bill quite a bit? It totally cuts down on your grocery bill. The average person has told us that they save about, um, one to $200, um, on their grocery bill every week or two, depends wow. on how often they shop. And so if you can save $200, even a month, um, on your grocery bills, and that that's going to really add up over the course of a year. You're going to end up saving over two thousand dollars. And so I know for like what I do on my on the live batch cook is I show my receipts. So I'm saying I show them that I'm in California where most people say it's really expensive, but I'm in California. I'm not in some teeny tiny town where everything is cheap. I'm in L.A. 
and I'm buying my groceries at Costco or whatever store is, you know, I look at the sale ads and see if I can get some organic vegetables on sale. But I'll get that, go to Costco and I'll go to, you know, the farmer's market and I'll show them, look, I spent $160 on my family of four this week for dinner. Every wow. day this week is prepped, you know, mm -hmm. so we have seven dinners and some lunches for $160. And they're like, whoa, are you serious? <laughs> yeah. Right. So that's just one way that it saves money. But again, it also saves the, with those one-off trips. If, you ha if you're in that grocery store, I guarantee you're not just going to go and grab the salt and walk out. You're mm -hmm. not going to do that. You're going to go in and you're going to see something. You're going to pick this up and, oh, yeah, I forgot I need that. And you're going to spend more money. So if you don't have to go to the grocery store, then you're not going to spend that money. Right. It also probably saves you a fortune too when you're in a pinch where it's like you don't have time to make the meal and you just run out and grab something from let's say a restaurant or let's say you said that you were um, making stuff for your husband. Imagine if you went and actually just bought food at a local restaurant every day. Um, you know, that would be a fortune. Yeah, it does add up. And it's, at his old um, job, he did buy lunch every single day. And we saw when he when he went to this new place that – he was saving quite a bit of money and I'm thinking, where are we getting this extra money? It's so funny because I remember having that conversation. I was like, where is this extra money coming from? And then I thought about it. I'm like, oh, he's not eating out for lunch anymore. Yeah, it's pretty so huge. It's like, it's like $50, $60 a week easily. <laughs> and I was like, oh, that's yeah. where it's coming from. New shoes for mama. Yeah, found <laughs> it. Found it and it's gone. And it's gone. <laughs> that's, that's funny. <laughs> Um, you know, you were talking about uh, prepping smoothies. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, that's one of my favorite tricks um, to as well because a lot of people have this machine, bullet, whatever they call it. I used to have one, but mine burned out. And I was like, oh, I don't want to spend another hundred bucks on that. And so I, <laughs> being the scientist that I am, I found, I have these mason jars and they're actually the coconut jars from Trader Joe's, the coconut oil jars from Trader Joe's Okay. because I go through coconut oil like, you know, tissue. Yeah. And so I have those coconut oil jars and I'm thinking, you know, this, the blender attachment for my $30 blender can actually fit on the top of this coconut oil jar. And so I was like, I wonder what would happen if I put my smoothie ingredients in this coconut oil jar and blend it and see what happens. Maybe I can get the same effect or maybe it'll be like chunky, but that's okay. I'm not buying another bullet. Yeah. So <laughs> I, I tried it and it actually came out just as smooth and creamy as it did in the, in the uh, bullet thing. And so I was like, well, I'm going to prep every, I'm going to prep the weeks. I'm going to put my, I'm going to put the, the fruit in the bottom and then my kale and then my honey and my protein and put everything in there. I'm going to seal that jar up and put it in the refrigerator and see what happens. And so through the week, I was taking them out every morning and I would just put the blender attachment on, blend it up, smoothies done. And I was like, that literally took five minutes. <laughs> That's yeah. all it took was five minutes. And it already has, you know, because I put a lot of stuff in my smoothies and my husband's like, it's just a meal in a jar because I do put everything in there. I put my um, my maca powder and my gelatin and my collagen and a whey protein. I, so I put all of that in the refrigerator with my vegetables and threw it in there. It was already cold. It was perfect. Blended it right up. I was like, oh my gosh, that's awesome. And it didn't cost me a dime. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So you said you didn't really prep breakfast, but that's, I mean, that's Typically, that's my breakfast is a smoothie because right now um, I, I'm pretty sensitive to eggs. So I got my food sensitivities back. I can't have eggs right now. So um, smoothies are my best bet. And um, plus they're fast and I feel great having a light meal in the morning. Right. And I'm not the person – I don't eat – I'm not a big heavy breakfast person either. I'm not an, an eggs and waffle. I was never that person. So that's usually my breakfast as well. So when I could – pull them out of the refrigerator. They're already done. You mean, I don't have to go measure and put yeah. anything in there. It's just, I did it and I put five of them in there and I just pull them out, snap that uh, attachment. And like it really screws right on there with the, the blades and the little gasket and it screws right on, pop it in my blend on my blender. And it works just like my new, my old bullet, whatever that thing was that uh, started to smoke on me. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. I yeah. burned it out. <laughs> Yeah, I think it's like so a, it there's like the a magic way. magic bullet. There's a Nutribullet. I've I've burnt them all up. Me too. 
<laughs> That's why I had to go to the Vitamix. It was the only thing that could handle the amount of smoothie making I do, I guess. Which is which is like I I could not believe that this little because I have a, a Vitamix, I have a Ninja, and I was like, I don't want to clean all that. I just want to see what happens if this works, and it totally works. That's perfect. Yeah, it doesn't get much better than that. All right. So one of the things that you talk about are some of the kitchen hacks, right? You kind of jumped the gun on me, and you so sorry. <laughs> you, you, you told everybody that you have some on YouTube, which I'm really excited to see myself actually. So, um, what are some really cool kitchen hacks that um, that really save people time, money, and 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 are make their lives easier? So I'll give you one of my favorites. I'm I'm a big fan of onions. I love onions. Onions and everything. Onions have to be in all of my food. I just love them. But I don't like onion eyes. I hate onion eyes and I hate that feeling of while I'm cooking, you know, I'm going to drip in something. So I don't want, I don't want yeah. that. If you take a tablespoon of white vinegar, just a tablespoon, and you put it on your cutting board, it absorbs all of the um, the gases from the onions and so you no longer get onion eyes. It, it completely wipes it away and it doesn't change the flavor of your food. Wow. So really? <laughs> totally, you can just cut up an onion and you won't have onion eyes. And also with onions, if you start from the not root tip, the top, the part that grows out of the ground is where you start cutting. If you cut the root tip, you're automatically going to release the strongest gases that are in the onion first. So you don't want to start with the root tip. You want to start with the, the part that comes out of the ground. And then um, also when you're cutting these onions, you can toss them in your blender and cover them with water. And then the water helps move the onions through the blender so that they're cut, they're chopped in a more uniform size. So you don't necessarily need a food processor if you don't have one. Although I think everyone should have one. If you don't, if you don't want one or you can't afford one or you don't have a place to put one, you can totally do it in your blender. And so those are, those are a couple of the onion kitchen hacks that I absolutely love. Yeah. Same with, um, some people eat cauliflower rice. And so yeah. the way to rice cauliflower really fast is you do the same thing. You take the florets, you put them in the blender, you cover them with water until they float just a little bit, and then you pulse them in your blender. The water helps move those cauliflower around, those florets around as well, and you end up with your rice cauliflower. You just pour it in a strainer and you're done. Totally easy. Hmm. Very interesting. My, <laughs> mind's, my mind's blown right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna have to get on. Like I said, I'm gonna have to get on YouTube and check out all of them because they're yeah, they sound great. They sound really, really good. <laughs> so you know, I have one last question for you, and you know, and I don't know if you if you um really teach this or not, or it's something you get into. But as far as traveling and trying to do meal prep while traveling, do you get into that at all? No, I don't. But I used to travel for a living, um, so I completely understand what it is to be on the road and trying to figure out your food situation. <laughs> so what I usually tell people, is, especially when I was in the airport a lot, is I would take um, one of my favorite travel meals was, and I know you're sensitive to eggs, but boiled eggs. And um, you know the pepperoncinis? If you take the pepperoncinis out and you keep that juice and you bo throw boiled eggs in there, mm -hmm. so delicious. And it's a protein packed meal. It's already flavored. Um, sardines mm. were my, my fallback, Sardine, canned sardines are always my fallback. Um, I would also tank, there's these uh, tank bars that I absolutely love. That's buffalo and cranberry. Yeah. I always, I keep those in my purse because those are really good. And it's already got, you know, it's high in protein and it's just a few ingredients. And I also would take uh, kale chips, chopped up vegetables with me everywhere. And again, preparation is key. And those are things you can find anywhere. So you can find sardines pretty much anywhere or kipper snacks. You can find those anywhere. A can of tuna, which most people are like gross, but you can do a lot with tuna um, and not just have tuna salad. You can actually, if you have a, a little kitchenette, you can mix in a little coconut flour and a little egg and a little bit of onion and you make tuna cakes and a little bit of fresh dill. And you can make tuna cakes and actually have warm tuna instead of um, just tuna salad, which most people don't want. Wow. So, okay. Those are some good yeah. tips. Yeah, I used to travel a lot, <laughs> yeah. so um, I had to find a way again on the road to to stay prepared. And so I, I, if you know the foods that you like while you're out, you can find a grocery store and you already have this shopping list in your head because you know you're gonna buy for, uh, you're gonna buy fresh greens, um, you're gonna buy tuna, you're gonna buy salmon, 
you're going to buy a uh, jerky if you, if, if in a pinch and I would do that and take those with me as well. So okay. those are yeah. super travel. They travel really well. Absolutely. Well, that's great. Well, Arletha, this is all incredible information. I'm, and I'm really excited for our listeners to have it because it's something that the, um, average individual struggles with anymore. Like I said, I, you know, we work with a lot of entrepreneurs here in New Vision, but I would say anybody who's busy, which is almost everybody, you know, even even you know, families, whoever, like it, everybody's busy to where this meal preparation could help them out an incredible amount. So we really appreciate you coming on today, sharing these tips, strategies, hacks, and um, and and really just giving this information to our listeners. Totally. I had a blast and uh, I'm always glad to help. Awesome. And great. So what are some ways that people can get in contact with you? So people can always find me at 20 dishes, which is the number 20 in the word dishes dot com. Um, and then I'm also at level health and nutrition and that's uh, LVL health dot com. And um, I'm always somewhere around Facebook because I'm always trying to help our members get questions, get their questions answered quickly. So those are the best few ways to find me. <laughs> and I'm pretty much the only Orletha on the planet. So if you Google me, you'll find me. <laughs> well, awesome. Well, thanks for coming on and uh, appreciate you having, having you on the show today. Thanks again. If you like the show, one of the greatest ways that you can show your appreciation is by sharing it with your friends. Also, don't forget to check out the Dr. Nick Zarowski YouTube channel and subscribe. We're putting many great videos up there right now and there's many more to come. You're going to love it. And lastly, if you want to reap the benefits of Orletha's work at 20 Dishes, I'm going to put a link just below this episode on the New Vision Excel website so that you can click on that link and get right into her website and you know either become a member or just check out some of the free information that she offers. If you want more information to multiply your health and simplify your lifestyle, visit our website at excelpodcast.com. Until next time, have an outstanding day.